welcome once again to vehicle maintenance and repairs.com Gary De La Cruz your host um, behind me we have uh, one of Volkswagen's big vehicles that's quite a monster it's a V8 petrol that's called a Touareg okay um, they're very uh, um, you know they're very formidable uh, off-road vehicles but a big monster of a vehicle um, this vehicle does belong to um, you know somebody that uh, an acquaintance of mine um, he actually works for a spare shop you know a, a, a parts department uh, which I buy um, most of my space from and uh, you know I'm, I'm going to uh, do an oil change you know he supplied me with all the parts and, and so forth but let me show you what the car looks like as I said it's a Volkswagen Touareg it's a V8 okay monster car um, let me familiarize you, so, uh, familiarize you with the uh, inside of the vehicle okay it has uh, you know your normal um, sort of uh, display where you have a uh, um, your rev counter you have your speedo you have your petrol gauge temperature gauge oil pressure gauge and of course a battery gauge as well you know to check how much power you've got in your battery it's got a it's a full spec car because it's got uh, you know all the controls on the steering it also has an airbag on the steering it is automatic Okay, and it has a complete uh, myri myriad of uh, controls here for your aircon and your radios and so forth. Okay, and you put the ignition on, you get your normal lights coming on there, you know, your warning lights, uh, battery lights and, and so on. Um, you know, your uh, which gear you're in, the mileage you're on, you know, your trip meters and all that kind of thing. All right, and uh, the handbrake is one of the pedal, the pedal type handbrakes, which you which you depress with your foot. The release you use the dash, uh, the, the, the lever to release your, your handbrake, and then of course you have a pedal down there at the bottom that you step on to apply the the handbrake. Okay, so that's the inside of the vehicle. So let's go and get this oil changed. Right. So before we can actually access the bottom part of the engine here. We need to remove this, this this cover, okay? It's a plastic type cover which basically uh, you know runs the length, the length of the of the um, chassis of the underneath, okay? It just simply slides in um, in the front. It has two bolts uh, over here, another two bolts there, and another two bolts over here. So it's six bolts that holds this cover in, and then here are two metal. Uh, um, little units that just slide in here to give it a little bit of spring load okay so you have to remove this plate from the bottom of the vehicle okay it looks like this when you're looking at it okay it's just basically a cover plate okay um, it's not going to take a serious knock but it it, it, it it does deflect little items that get picked up off the road but you have to remove it so that you can expose the bottom of the engine to get the oil drained so basically I'm just going to do the oil change but I just want to show you, you know, um, if you're going to be working on the engine like to take the spark plugs out, which we're not going to be doing on this occasion, but if you have to, there are three covers here, okay, starting on this side, this covers just basically pull up, okay, and you can see it has grommets, you know, it has little indents there, you know, uh, with rubber, with rubber grommets over there as well, which basically holds it, yeah, it just basically clips onto the engine, two on the engine, and then uh, three on the, on the, on the centre cover. You have exactly the same thing on the other side, so all you have to do is just pull them off, okay, like that, so you have those two covers off, and then of course you have a centre cover, which also just pulls off, okay, um, you can see that it has these, um, you can see that it has these rubber, these rubber grommets here, all right, the rubber grommets, which just basically pull, so pulls off, all right. So once we have that all, you can actually, you'll have a better view of the engine. So with having a good view of the engine now, we can actually see the spark plugs, okay, eight on this side, uh, four on that side, and four on that side. They each have the individual coil, so it's uh, not a centralized coil system, it's an individual pencil coil system. Um, you can see the cylinder head over here, one on this side, one on that side, and these covers obviously clip off so that you can inspect or check or replace your cam belt. So it's a cam belt driven motor. Alright, so we're just going to be uh, concerning ourselves with uh, changing the oil. Um, the guy says he, I shouldn't flush the engine because he's going to put some prolong in it. So I've just warmed the car up and now I'm going to be draining the oil and removing the filter, but let's, let's show you how to do that. So under the car, we have an aluminium sump, okay, 
with a size 10 allen key uh, grub screw for as a um, as a sump plug so let's just uh, go ahead and loosen up the sump plug okay once we have the sump plug loosened uh, we can turn it all the way by hand make sure that you have a uh, receptacle under the vehicle so with the sump plug being uh, loose loosened up nicely we can turn it by hand and we can get that oil to start draining into our receptacle and that's what our sump plug looks like I'll show you on the bench again as well okay so we get the oil to drain nicely be sure to warm the car up we are not doing a flush on this engine so I have warmed the car up appropriately so once the oil is drained out we will now locate the, the oil filter to uh, remove it moving a little to the front of the engine we will see this unit over here which is basically housing your uh, cartridge type oil filter it is actually a size 36 socket okay which we just simply need to loosen just make sure that we have our oil receptacle below that so that when the oil drains out we know we won't be messing all over the floor so written on this unit is a, a torque setting here the torque setting is 25 to 30 newton meters okay so we'll just turn the you see all the oil coming out there and then of course we have our uh, oil filter attached to that unit which just basically pulls out quite simply okay it pulls out we'll let that drain nicely and then we'll take our we'll take our uh, oil filter holder and we'll go and not clean it out nicely with some engine cleaner so that's it you know um, let it drain let it drain nicely sufficiently and still it stops dripping and then we can put assemble everything again so this is what the sump plug looks like okay it's a uh, quite simply a grub a grub screw over here all right with a size uh, 10 allen key okay to take it out and put it back obviously it should have quite a nice big um, uh, washer on to prevent it from leaking and then of course we have the the, the, the insert okay a cartridge type insert um, okay so cartridge type filter okay this is how it works we have two different uh, uh, diameters okay so it can only go in one way you cannot put the filter in that way okay it's got to go in um, this way okay it's got the big aperture on the one side the smaller aperture on the other side and as you can see this filter is quite uh, clogged and dirty if we compare it to a brand new filter it does take the M123 uh, oil filter that's the GUD brand okay opening up the box we will find the filter inside um, obviously brand new okay you can see a massive difference there and uh, you know you see the different um, diameters okay so that's the new filter and in the box we will also get um, two rubber o-rings the one rubber o-ring goes onto the casing okay and the other one goes into there's a little drain plug on the casing which I'm not even going to fiddle with at this stage because I don't find it necessary okay so I'm going to go ahead and clean this uh, clean this unit and then get back to you when I'm done with that so we've cleaned up our unit nicely okay um, 25 newton meters is the torque setting on this unit size 36 socket remember okay so what we'll do is we'll put on the new uh, rubber all right quite simply we'll just put it on put it into the appropriate groove okay get it in all the way around put a little bit of oil on the rubber so that the rubber is not dry and sticky okay We'll put a little bit of oil there we'll just rub it in right round okay that'll just enable this to turn in much nicer and smoother and then of course we have our um, m123 um, filter insert as i said earlier it does have two different uh, size apertures so you know like in most others you can put them on anywhere but this one can only go in one way okay the thick side goes over there like that 
push it in nicely down like that you know get it to go all the way down and um, new washer and uh, threading tape on the sump plug and we are ready to go and uh, fit this but before we go and do that let's just see what kind of oil we're using here um, the, uh, this uh, guy uh, you know which I'm doing this oil change for he wants me to put the uh, prolong um, you know uh, the uh, engine treatment um, into this um, engine okay it reads turbocharged diesel engine treatment um, but I suppose it can be used in a petrol engine as well prolong that's what he wants me to put in and um, you know this is the kind of oil he's given me two five liters because I think it takes about seven liters but we'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll put the oil in as usual put in five liters first then check the, the, the check the dipstick and then add as we need okay until we finally find out how much it actually takes so that's the kind of oil I've never seen this oil before but uh, you know I am just adhering to customers uh, request okay so let's go fit those two units and then we'll come and uh, come back to fill up the oil we get our sump plug turned in by hand threaded nicely okay and then once we have it threaded and we know we're not crossing our threads okay we can go ahead and use a spanner we'll just tighten it by hand as much as we can first Sure you tighten it quite nicely wipe off all our oil spills because we're coming back to check for leaks we have to make sure that she will not leak once we got it running okay and now we'll turn our attention to the fitting the oil filter and housing So we'll just simply take our filter, put it in, turn it in by hand as far as we can. Alright, we put a spanner to it. That's 36 socket ratchet. We'll turn it up against. Okay, you can feel that seal sealing off nicely there. And then we'll take our torque wrench at 25 newton meters and we'll give it the final tightening. Okay, we'll just make sure that it's nice and... Okay, 25 newton meters. Also, wipe off all our spills because we need to come and check for leaks. Now we can go ahead and we can go and fill the oil up. Okay, there's two ways you can do this. You can take this little neck, goose neck off, so that you get, uh, you know, direct access to the engine. But I prefer to leave that on, because it just makes it easier to fill up the oil. And then of course the oil cap comes on top of that. So I'm going to start out with 4 litres. So I'm starting out with 4 litres. All right, so we'll put in the pull the dipstick, give it an initial wipe off there. Very low, down there. We've got to come up till this mark over here, or that mark there, that's the maximum mark. So that was four liters. So at this stage, I'll go ahead and fit, you know, um, throw in the prolong. Okay, this prolong is 500 mil. So that's going to account for 500 mil of the volume. Another two liters going in. Let's tip the dipstick once more. We're on our maximum mark, six and a half liters. Okay, bearing in mind we still have to start the vehicle. All right. So I'll put the oil filler cap back and get the car started. All right, we'll get the ignition turned on. I don't see any oil light, but we'll watch the oil pressure. 
Okay, get it started. But there's no unusual noises on the car. No oil light warnings going on. So I'll take it that, uh, you know, everything is in order. And switch it off one more time. There is absolutely no oil light. That's quite scary. Okay, but anyway, starting up again. This car won't start if you don't apply the brake. So she starts, engine sounds normal, no noises. Okay, uh, let's go and check the level first. With the car switched off, we'll check the level again. Um, the oil filter has now obviously filled up, so we can check the oil level. And as you can see, our oil level is somewhere down there. Okay, over there, a minimum. So I would say, let's put in another liter. So we've got seven and a half liters in there. I'll put in another half liter. That should bring it up to eight liters. Okay, checking for leaks on the V8 water. Engine is running, eight liters of oil in. Okay, the sump, nice and dry, no leaks, no drips. Come to the front, we'll check the, the oil filter unit, and everything seems to be nice and dry, no drip, no leaks. So all we now have to do is put back the bottom cover, okay, with its six bolts. And then the top cover to put that back as well, and then we'll have done an oil change on the V8 Tuareg Force Rifle. Okay, all done with our Volkswagen Touareg oil change alright it's a Volkswagen Touareg a V8 it's a big car it's a massive car I did this whole procedure without jacking the car it's got so much good like, so much ground clearance okay it's a uh, more than a family size car you know it's got a spacious uh, uh, back spur boot section okay um, as I said it is a V8 <coughs> And uh, uh, the, the owner of this car, he does the oil change at least every six months, okay, which I admire because uh, if he wants the car to last, and, and, and it's not exactly a new car, it's an oldish car, so if you want it to last, you know, um, do the maintenance. Once again, thank you very much for joining me um, in my uh, workshop, um, you know, with the Tuareg uh, oil change. Um, until uh, the next video. Gary Dalla Cruz for vehicle maintenance and repairs.com. Drive safely. Cheers. Right, on board with the Tuareg. I'm going to uh, take the car back to the guy and pick up my, van, my vehicle. Um, but let's see. Okay. See, please apply the brake. You cannot start this car without the brake light on. Airbag fault. Okay, you know, these electronic uh, vehicles will have all sorts of uh, warnings. Okay, so there is obviously something wrong with the... There is something wrong with the airbag. Okay, proximity alert, got to get the gate open. Okay, handbrake's up. That's what happens when you don't release your handbrake. This car's got such a nice fruity tone, you know, with it being a V8. And uh, it just sounds like a monster. It drives nicely, gives you.
gives you a nice big uh, luxury big car uh, big car feel and drive um, you know like uh, Volkswagen the, you know the luxury is always pretty good um, she's quick for a big car I, I estimate this car to probably weigh about three ton and um, you know for it to be this quick um, you know uh, at a, a, you know obviously the V8 motor uh, contributes to that I'm doing this video in real time to give you an idea of how far away um, the spare shop is um, it's just up the road it's uh, probably about a kilometer and a half you know just up the road here they are my first uh, stop when I need spare parts um, you know if I don't find uh, what I need uh, with diesel electric deep river and then uh, I go further down the line uh, to the next uh, nearest uh, spare shop until I find what I what I need okay so this is a diesel electric that we're going to right now you can see my van standing over there okay and uh, I see uh, the parking is still vacant where this car originally parks so yeah there we are this car runs very smoothly idling at about uh, 700 uh, revs switch off all right let's go and collect my keys and i'll be on my way look here's my baby I'm gonna collect her now this is the guy money money that's the guy the owner Thank you very much, sir. Ah, thank you very well much. Well done. Eight cool. liters of oil and prolong. Beautiful. Running sweet. You know what makes me nervous about that car? When I started up after mm. I've done an oil change, is the fact that your oil pressure takes, gauge yeah. doesn't work and you don't have an oil pressure light. So I'm always wondering, shit, no, no, is no, oil that, pressure? That's oil, that's oil that's temperature. Is it oil temperature, temperature. on the left hand side? Yeah, it's not oh, pressure. I thought it was oil pressure. Uh -huh. So it doesn't have an oil light. You drive like a hooligan and then it comes up. Then it comes up. Now, I just want to say, this is Mark. Now Mark was the one that I didn't introduce to you last time. Okay. All right. So that's Mark. That's Mo's. Mo's my go-to guy actually. And then Hilton. All right. And this is... Um, all right. Those are the parts guys. You know, that they, they're always giving me the parts out of the store and all that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Not the wrong parts, Mark. All right. So this is diesel electric. Hilton, my key. And I'm off. Um, that oil didn't look off bad, eh? That I took out. Because we only replaced it, what, six months, eight months ago? Yeah, but that was because of that gas problem and the prolong. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, like yeah it. that's it. But it, it, wasn't, it wasn't too bad. Eh? The oil wasn't too bad. But you still got a little bit of oil left up. Stuck it in the back okay. of the boot there. Eh? Alright, Thank thanks very much. much. Cheers, guys. Cheerio. If they need little procedures done, uh, they supply all the parts. And I do it, and uh, you know it just gains a little bit of favour and uh, uh, basically uh, promotes goodwill. All right. So back into my car, back home to have a uh, relaxing second half of the day. Right on board my Pajero. Everything's manual. Okay, this is a battery monitor here to see to monitor my uh, my two batteries which I have. I have a battery, second battery in my vehicle four. Uh, let's get it charged. Okay, while I'm driving, and uh, you know with my new with my new packing system in the back, you can see I cannot see through my back window, so I rely on my on my uh, side mirror. Okay, I rely on my side mirrors to see where I'm going and what I'm going to hit or not. So I'm backing out as careful as I can with my mirrors. And out we go. I am amazed that I don't have a, a mount in this car yet for my GoPro, but it'll come. 
So you can see uh, that the proximity of this spare shop, you know, they are not very far from where I live. So they are my first stop when I'm searching for spares to cut down on my time. Um, and I usually use my scooter when I come out to get spare parts. And uh, as you can see, this is the Wall Road in uh, Deep River. It's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty busy road, um, especially midday and towards the end of the day. The road gets pretty, pretty, pretty busy. And um, we're turning now. We're taking a right turn into uh, Princess Play Road, uh, which is the road which will take me to my road, which is Allen Road. And uh, just once this traffic is cleared, we can just take the turn into. Um, this is Princess Play Road. We have your foodies on the corner. Uh, they sell uh, expired food, you know, that is still consumable. I personally don't go there. Um, but there are lots of people that uh, find value in that, you know, that they save a lot of money and the food is still uh, pretty edible. Um, so coming down this road, it's a sort of semi-industrial area. We have industry on the right hand side, but we have resident residential on the left hand side okay so i call it semi-industrial uh, there's quite a few big firms out here okay uh, there's a big uh, panel beating firm up ahead Milanese auto body they are the corner over there i do some work for some of the tax uh, employers employees also and then uh, at the end of this road this is princess play road we have the play up ahead in front of us and I, you turn right into my road, which is Allen Way. Okay. And I am about 300 meters up the road. <laughs> I've been living in this area for almost 30 years. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of changes, uh, but uh, yet, the, you know, the area is still basically the same. You know, I've got, we've got the, 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 the recreational park. Not that you can do much here because it's all fawns. You can't go and walk there barefoot. Um, and then of course the two palm trees. And this is me. Get the gate opened. And back home. So that's not too far from the space shop. The space shop's just down the road. For me. Cut uh, down a lot on my time. Right, safe head off.